All right, brothers and sisters, once again, Shabar Israel, late night, bringing you another video. In this video, I will talk about the origin of Halloween. I'm not going to go all into it because it's a long breakdown. But um, if you can get what you can get, get what you can get and share the knowledge, wisdom and understanding and understanding. To brothers and sisters out there that might not be aware of what's really going on, that might not be, you know, up on game about this pagan satanic holiday, man. Better yet known as Halloween. So I'm going to wait till brothers and sisters come into the room, at least a couple brothers and sisters get into the room, and then we will commence with the lesson on tonight. So hope all is well. Hope you guys are doing good. You know, this is Solid Foundation Israelite Academy. That's S-F-I-A, Solid Foundation Israelite Academy. You can also find me on YouTube. Head over to YouTube and, and simply type in Shabar Israel. Just type in Shabar Israel. That's S-H-A-B-A-R-I-S-R-A-E-L. Shabar Israel. Type that in in the search icon uh, on YouTube and you... You'll see my channel. Okay. And so we waiting for brothers and sisters to get into the room. This is going to be a wonderful lesson on tonight. It's going to be a short lesson. So it's not long at all. Because I know blacks, Hispanics, Latinos, and Native Americans, which are the Israelites. I know that we have a short attention span. So I'm just going to kind of go into it. You know. Wait a couple more seconds. And then I'm going to go into the origin of. Halloween, man. All right. Also, we will be using Bible reference. So, I mean, right here, as you guys can see, wait a minute. This is the foundation, the good book, God's policy, the Holy Bible. Okay. We will be using this as reference. To carry out this wonderful lesson. So let's go into Colossians 2 verse 8. We're not going to wait around any longer. Brothers and sisters, I'll see you when you get in the room. So I'm flipping in my Bible, Holy Bible, to the book of Colossians 2 verse 8. All right. This is what it says. Colossians chapter 2 verse 8 says, Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. So Colossians 2 verse 8 tells us to beware. Now, beware is to be conscious. Beware is to have a sound mind. Beware is to be sane. To keep your eyes peeled. All right. To keep your head above the water. To always watch as well as pray. That's what Colossians 2 verse 8 says. It says, beware. Now, why do we have to beware as a nation? Blacks, Hispanics, Latinos, and Native Americans, primarily who I'm talking to, because you or the Israelites, according to the Bible, the chosen people of the Most High God. So why do we have to be aware? Because it says we have to be aware, lest any man comes along and try to spoil us. Spoil us through what? Try to spoil us through philosophy and vain deceit and tradition. And so Halloween is a traditional ceremony. It's a traditional it's a traditional observation. That's what Halloween is. It deals with tradition. Now, you know, we don't supposed to follow after the rudiments of the world. We really supposed to be chasing Christ. We supposed to be following after Christ, who we know as Yahweh Shai, who the world know as Jesus. All right. The so-called black man from the tribe of Judah. So we supposed to be, you know, ambassadors for the Messiah. We supposed to be followers of Christ. Not followers of vain philosophy, deceit. Not followers of tradition of man. That's what Colossians 2 verse 8 is trying to tell us here. So we need to beware at least 
We need to beware before we be spoiled by the tradition of man. Halloween has spoiled a lot of us brothers and sisters. If you can be honest, Halloween have taken its toll on a lot of us, blacks, Hispanics, Latinos, and Native Americans. All right. And, you know, you know, it didn't happen overnight. Halloween was taught to us, you know, since knee high. When we came up, uh, ever since head start, start kindergarten, elementary school, middle school, high school, and so forth, even college. These uh, these institutions have consistently pushed this on us. So we grew up. We grew up learning Halloween. You know, we, we didn't know any better. We just we followed what was around us and we grew up doing that. But now we should be conscious and we should be aware of things. Now we should be better than we were some odd years ago. So, yeah, we need to be aware. At least any man spoil us. And so when you're dealing with Halloween, what comes to mind is Ireland, Scotland, because the Irish and the Scottish they they brought Halloween to the Americas around the 18th century. So Halloween was brought to the Americas around what? The 18th century by who? The Irish and the Scottish who they who they was known as Druids, the ancient the ancient Druids. So Druids, these people were pagan worshipers. These people were satanic people. Okay, so because when you do your research going back to ancient Ireland and um, Scotland, these people was highly pagans, man. And what do they? What did they do? They brought their pagan customs to the United States in the 18th century. So it really wasn't called Halloween from the get go. It was really called the Night of Mischief. That's what it was called. It was called a Night of Mischief. So it wasn't really called Halloween. When this thing first popped off. All right. When you think of Halloween, you think of what? You think of pumpkins. All right. You think of black cats. You think of bats. You think of uh, ghosts and goblins. We see Antoine. We see Antoine Brooks watch. Appreciate you, my brother. Peace and blessings, man. We thank you for tuning in. It's good to have you on tonight. We are talking about the origin of Halloween, basically. We're talking about Halloween, man. A lot of people don't know the origin. A lot of people don't know the beginning of Halloween and how did it start it. So that's what we're talking about. And so, like I said, the ancient the ancient Druids, which are the Irish and the Scottish, brought this to America in the 1800s. All right. So uh, it ain't too much to say on this, but I'm going to say what's on my heart. You ever heard trick or treat? They say trick or treat. You can trick or treat. I'm going to break down the origin of that. I'm going to I'm going to basically show you, you know, how this trick or treat thing came all about. So Halloween is basically a night of praise and honor to honor this guy by the name of Sam Hain. Halloween is all about honoring and praising the God of Sam Hain, man. Now, Sam Hain was the God of the dead. And on Halloween, you was to give praise, honor, and glory to the to Sam Hain. All right? Sam Hain, I believe that's S-A-M-H-A-I-N. Sam Hain. Sam Hain, like I said, it was all about giving praises and glorification to him. And so, you know... Let's see, because I have a lot of things written down. Sam Hain was the supreme night of demonic jubilation. Spirits of the dead would rise from the graves, supposedly. They, was, they would rise out the graves, all right? And they would wander the countryside trying to return to, to their homes. And so you know what you had to do? When these spirits rose from the dead to return to their homes on that night, in the honor of Sam Hain, you had to trick or treat these spirits. Now, what do I mean? You can basically trick the spirits by masquerading 
by disguising yourself by putting on cosmetics and makeup to look like them in order to save your ass and your family from being consumed because when these spirits rose from the dead supposedly they would turn they will return back to their former homes whence they lived a long time ago and if you didn't trick or treat these spirits these spirits would kill you and your whole entire family man now we know this is just a mythological story but according to the ancient druids according to the ancient scottish and the irish they believe this bullshit and they bought into it and so when they when the irish and the scottish migrated to america they brought this shit over here man and so yeah this is why people trick or treat because when your children when your little kids dress up as whatever concerning halloween because we have a lot of little boys and girls you know that's going to the stores they're they're buying their costumes they're getting in the halloween spirit you know when your little boy or your little girl put on that halloween costume a lot of people is unaware of this they are playing the role of evil spirits they are playing the role of evil spirits when your little boy when your little boys and girls put on those halloween costumes they are playing the role as demonic spirits. They are playing a role role as ghosts, goblins, and ghouls, drugins and jins. That's what they're playing the role as. And so I know we don't like the devil. All, neither one of us like the devil. Anything that, that has to do with satanic a activity, we tend to we tend to flee from. But you gotta be aware because if you hate the devil, if you hate Satan, if you hate anything demonic. Then you're not going to be for Halloween. If you stand for the Lord, if you stand for God, you're not going to be for Halloween. If you're trying to progress and live a righteous life, you know, you might be trying to get in the word. You know, you might be reading your Bible, trying to trying to progress your life. You're not going to let your children indulge in this satanic practice, man. And so if your children choose to go ahead and carry out Halloween by dressing up, in their costumes, whether it's a girl or a boy, what they're doing is they're playing the role of evil spirits. Because once these spirits arose from the grave, supposedly, according to the ancient Celtics, according to these ancient Scottish and Irish people, according to them, they said on that night, the night of Samhain, the demonic jubilation, after those spirits came out the graves, they return to their home and they knocked on the door basically these spirits knocked on the door they returned to their home and once you open the door if you didn't have enough of treats to appease these spirits they would kill you and your whole family so what you had to do you had to trick or you had to treat them now you can trick the spirits by dressing up as one of them and so when they come to your house you are dressed up as one of them. Maybe you can blend in among the demonic activity. So this is where putting on the paint, putting on the cosmetics, putting on the makeup, you know, the Dracula teeth and all this bullshit. This is where it comes from. Because you had to trick or you had to treat these spirits from killing you and your whole family, man. So you can treat the spirits by giving them candy, cookies treats whatever you may have you can try to treat the spirits to keep the spirits happy to keep the spirits from killing you and your family or like i said you can try to trick the spirits by dressing up as one of them so if they did arrive at your house they wouldn't notice you because you would look like one of them so does trick or treat that's where that shit comes from trick or treat man so when your children play the role as dressing up during halloween they are playing the role as those spirits that goes that goes to these particular houses to try to kill the owner and the, and the family of the house. They are playing the role as these demonic spirits that, you know, that's why your kids, that's why when you take your kids trick-or-treating, what do they do? They go around, they knock on individual doors. They knock on the doors asking for what? Candy. Now, why would they knock on the doors asking for candy? Because they are playing the role as the demonic spirit that supposedly returned back to the back, back that returned back to his house. And if and if and if you didn't welcome him in, he would kill you if you didn't give him candy. 
or if you didn't masquerade. So we got to know what we're getting into, man. You know, um, also a lot of people there, a lot of people, they are afraid of bats. They are afraid of cats. Anything that's dealing with nocturnal animals, they are afraid of. Because back then, these ancient Druids, they was basically saying that, uh, you know, bats, owls, they were saying that these creatures had powers to communicate with the dead. That's what they were saying. And so anytime you came across an owl, you came across a bat, you came across a cat or something like that, they believed that these creatures could communicate with the spirits of the dead. But we know that's all bullshit, man. If you're conscious and if you got your third eye open, you already know what's up. You know what I'm saying? I'm just doing this for the people that don't know about this satanic holiday, man. So, yes, when the Irish immigrated to America, uh, you got to understand, Halloween didn't start off with the usage of carving pumpkins. Because, you know, a pumpkin represents Halloween. Now, a pumpkin, what a pumpkin was really used for, like I said, on that demonic night of jubilation to honor Sam Hain, these evil spirits would come out the grave. What the pumpkin was really used for, the pumpkin was used for the scare off evil spirits. So they, so what, what the Irish would do, the Scottish and the Irish would do, they would carve the pumpkin in the form of a hideous look. And they would, they would, they would carve the pumpkin in the form of a hideous look. So when these demons, these spirits did come, to try to ravage the house, they would look at these pumpkins and uh, it was like the resemblance of them. It was like looking into the mirror. And so when the evil spirits would look at these pumpkins that, that tried to return back to their homes, these pumpkins supposedly supposed to be used to ward off evil spirits. But sometimes the pumpkins didn't work. And you had to have that damn candy on deck. You had to have them Snickers and them Twix. You had to have them cookies. You had to have them snacks on that because them evil spirits weren't playing no games, supposedly according to the Irish tale. You feel me? And so what they did was they just set pumpkins out, you know, uh, to, to scare off evil spirits. But sometimes the pumpkins didn't work. You know, and so you had to trick or treat the evil spirits. But that's what pumpkins was used for. The Irish and the Scottish, they didn't use pumpkins um, starting off, they used beets and potatoes. But when the Irish and Scottish immigrated, when they migrated to America, it was very little turnips and beets found here. And so they used the pumpkin as a substitution. And, and they would stick a light in the inside, man, to scare off the spirits. I'm just dropping, I'm just dropping a, you know, dropping knowledge on Halloween. Not too much. Like I said, it ain't too much. But I'm just giving you what I have, you know. So, yeah, let me see what else. So you can say uh, in the year 1848, millions of the Irish immigrants poured into America as a result of the potato famine. All right. And um, they brought their customs. So basically, this is about it. According to this video. Let me see. Let me see what else I have. Uh, yeah. If not, if you didn't treat these spirits uh, like I say, they would kill. They would kill you and your whole family, and so that's why you had trick or treat. You can masquerade, treat the spirits, or you can treat the spirits. When your little kids dress up and ho during Halloween, and go from door to door in the community, they act as evil spirits. All right, and you have to trick or treat them. So if you don't like demons, if you don't like evil demonic spirits. Then you shouldn't allow your child to dress up as one to honor this pagan satanic festival, better yet known as Halloween. Now I give you one more book, chapter, and verse in the Bible because we as the Israelites do not supposed to be doing this. Because truth be told, white people put this customs on us. Black, Hispanic, Latino, and Native American people didn't know anything about no damn Halloween. It was the white people that pushed this on us. And I'm not trying to I'm not trying to be racist. Like I said, I'm not. This is not a racial statement. This is the truth. Because us as the nation of people, we were, we were not keeping uh, customs such as Halloween and every other federal holiday you could think of. We were not doing that as the, as the nation of Israel. We was keeping high holy days. We were keeping feast days according to the Most High. 
But uh, when we were subdued and when we was taken over, when the European people basically subjugated us and took us over as slaves, they taught us their customs. You see, so we learned about Halloween where we learned about Halloween in America. Who brought Halloween to America? Scottish and the Irish. Who were the Scottish and the Irish? So-called white people. So where truly did blacks, Hispanics, Latinos, and Native Americans learn this satanic pagan festival from? We learned it from the so-called white man, so-called white woman. And that's why the Bible tells you things like this. Uh, let me give you another book, chapter, or verse. According to the Bible. So we back in the Bible. This is the last book, chapter, and verse I will go over. And then we will close out the lesson. Okay. And so, yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, Romans 12 and 2. Because I could have picked a better verse than that. But I'll go with Romans 12 and 2. That'll do. So the book of Romans 12. This is chapter 12. Verse 2. two. Thank you for your time, Antoine Brooks, man. I really thank you for sacrificing your time. Time is valuable. So I don't. I, I'm not exploiting you. Thank you for taking your time out to listen to this wonderful video. Spread the truth and knowledge to other brothers and sisters. All right. And so this is Romans 12 and 2. It says, I'm going to start with Romans 12, verse 1, and then I'll work my way down to verse 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren. Romans 12 and 1. I, be I beseech you, therefore, brethren. By the mercies of, of God that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Romans 12 and 2. Now, this is what I really want to state here. It says, and be now confirmed to the world. So we don't supposed to be conformed to the world. It says, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So you have to elevate your mind. You have to elevate your mental state. You have to elevate, man. Once you become conscious of what's really going on, you'll know that America was uh, was set up against you anyway. Blacks, Hispanics, Latinos, and Native Americans. So we, according to Romans 12 and 2, be not conformed to the things of this world. And when you think of worldly things, you think of like federal holidays. Anything, anything got to do with the goddamn government. Anything that got to do with wicked ass America. It says, be not conformed to. This is Romans 12 and 2. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And so blacks, Hispanics, Latinos and Native Americans, which are the Israelites, the Hebrew Israelites, you got to renew your mind, man. Because everything that you was taught was basically a lie in America. They have deceived you. They have sedated you. They have lied to you continuously, even throughout the school systems. That's why you go to school. You really go to school to be lied to. That's what the government don't tell you. Cause why in the hell, why in the hell educational systems had to be set up? Why can't the parents educate their own children? You as a father, you as a mother, what makes you think you cannot educate your own children? Cause that's what they was doing. That's what they were doing during the ancient times. So why in the hell they had to set up educational systems? They set up educational systems to brainwash your children, man. They set up educational systems. To docile and sedate your children, man. And so this is all what we knew. Our mentality, our perception, our ideologies, our concepts has been based off the educational systems that we saturated into. And so now it's time to come from among that shit. So basically, I hope you was edified. Share the knowledge. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And be sure to support us as well on YouTube. Head over to YouTube, type in Shabar Israel, S-H-A-B-A-R-I-S-R-A-E-L, Shabar Israel on YouTube, and you can follow me. You'll see it says Solid Foundation Israelite Academy, and you can follow me on YouTube as well. Thank you for your time, brother. Uh, Antoine, if you got any questions, man, you know, you might want to shoot them to me right now because I'm about to close the video out. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, thank you for your time, man. Hope all is well with the fam. Hope all is well with you and your family, man. May the most I bless you and may he give you abundance of wisdom and knowledge and over inner and understanding. Okay. All right. So if you don't have any questions, brother, I'm going to close out. We didn't have too many to come in the, the room on tonight, but we thank 
the most high for, you know, what we have. So, yeah, without further ado, I'm gone. Thank you for your time, my brother. Shalom.